Hello, welcome back to Brandon Sushi Live Nodding. In this episode, I'm gonna take you through the creations of this uh, procedural push pin um, animations. Um, so the whole thing, the model, and then the animations, and everything is actually gonna be done inside Blender. And I will be using Svechok add-on and animation nodes. Animation nodes is gonna be used for instant things. So yeah, let's get started. Um, you can do this in many different ways. Uh, you can actually use Instancer. Blender owns a uh, Dupli as well, and then Displace Modifier. That's the easiest, I guess. Uh, but let's let's just see the whole process. First of all, with that kind of uh, push pin design, of course you want to have some kind of array. So we're gonna start with that first. We need some kind of grid of array. So I always like to use plane. And right away, I will be using VRB mesh because I want to see the real thing on the scene. Okay, so we got the real thing. This is just a, a plane, two by two. We want to increase that maybe eight by 10. So we have 80 or maybe have something that's a little bit more like that. And we center it. So this is, you can see like a plane, but if you look, turn on the grid, you can see the wire. And all right, so we, ha we have this. And of course you can always go to displace modifier and then start to give some kind of a procedural cloud. This is actually kind of okay and it's gonna work as well as a push pin. And if you do like dupli first instancing of a cylinder, it's just uh, simply gonna work. But we're not gonna be using that. What I will be using is instancing using animation nodes. But first of all, we want to create uh, the wave. So for the wave itself, I will be using the same um, coordinates that's already provided here. So let's break it down to the vector. You can see the vector, uh, you can, it's growing in X and Y. So we can use either X or Y. I will be using the Y because the Y is the long one. So math, so the Y goes in here, give it a sign functions and the output should go back as the vector and it should go into the Z. So the X and the Y will be the same, but the Z should be uh, deformed by the wave. So that's what we got. All right, so what else can we do here? We can actually move this value, kind of offset it using another value. So like that, oops. Uh, Oh yeah, so, so that's a bit wrong. That should be going into this guy right here and then this guy. So this way we can kind of offset it. First time I saw this, it's a kind of magical, but uh, it's actually pretty simple, but still kind of magical. Uh, and if you want to control the amplitude, you can use the multiplier here. So that's the multiplier for the wave. So yeah, and this we can control using frame. And another multiplier to control the speed. There you go, we got our wave. File, save as. If I'm not wrong, you can also multiply the wave here if you want to have more wave, more or less wave. So this guy, amplitude, this one frequency and this one is the the offset oh actually we lost we lost the offset we need to add it back so that's the offset if you like but we are using time to offset it anyway should be add so there's uh, another extra offset so that's the multiplier should be set to 1 so we have proper wave this is the speed. All right, so we are we are done with the wave, and uh, so let's save this as this is SV Sphere Chalk Wave. Now let's switch to animation nodes, and animation nodes in the especially in the latest version is really really good with instancing. So object instancing that's what we want, and we want to use a mesh in mesh info. Of course, mesh info also needs a object mesh data. 
So we're gonna grab this mesh that's uh, spread chalk generated and pass it into animation nodes. And we can look at the vertices, polygon, UV map. This is actually very, very important, this mesh info. This can go into the instancing and object transform output. This, of course, can be the locations. So this is the instancing position. And what we're gonna be instancing is the cylinder. So cylinder, make sure we have a UV and and go on let's see radius should be okay 0 0.15 that should be okay that's the master of the instance we're gonna grab it all right now we can have our push pin at any time we can always go back to Fair job and generate more or less of this. Maybe reduce the distance. So that's kind of nice. Okay, that's not too bad. Make this uh, like this. All right. So the next thing we can do is actually, if you want this to be like a real object, it needs to be. It needs to have some kind of box underneath to hide this uh, mechanism. Otherwise, this is just like a floating, floating things. It's not real. It doesn't feel real. So it needs some kind of uh, box to hold whatever magic you're doing. So that's uh, this is going to be the box to hold it. You can see this is just a box. The box doesn't have any... Uh, doesn't have any parameters to control it, so I, I tend to use uh, matrix, matrix apply, and simply scale it, scale it in uh, whatever directions we want. All right, so I think we are getting somewhere. And we we probably want to move this, put it on the ground. Um, Z axis. Okay, that's that's the ground. Also, for our grid, we need to kind of move it up. So scale, move it up. Now it's a little bit more believable. As a push pin wave. Oh yeah, so there's still like floating, floating thing. Just hide any kind of things that you don't want uh, your audience to see. So that way you can have the magic. Okay, file save as. So this is actually pretty much done. If you want to make this looping, it's even gonna be better. So this is a sine wave. If you look at it from the front view, oops view maybe side view and then orthographic you want to make this looping so you kind of eyeball it so that's a that kind of wave okay <coughs> excuse me and we kind kind of uh, <coughs> maybe 64 frame okay cool oh, bless me this one is gonna be looping Kind of eyeballing it and then looks kind of correct once it's uh, going through the y function uh, wave wave functions all right so instancer don't worry about it now how can we turn this into a usdz all right usdz for apple ar quick look um, it's actually very easy i'll show you export alembic just export everything first so this is a push pin demo for Alambic. Hopefully everything works correctly and not no crashing. Select everything. There's one thing that's actually missing here. It's the UV. Spread chalk, etc. doesn't do UV. Um, but you can kind of work around it. Import back the Alambic. You can see uh, it's actually working, right? Inside Blender. 
but it's not it's not done uh, delete the one you don't want but keep everything that you need and then parent it under a single node this is what you need if you want to use um, AR quick look or USDZ converter that's Apple offered so let's save this first this is a push pin convert this is preparing it so it's ready for AR quick look or USDZ file export alambic once again I call it push pin convert X or just a push pin demo X and re-export it just like that and done now if you go to USDZ converter let's just create a terminal here ocean cool CD desktop I'm gonna do it very very quickly XC run USDZ converter and push pin demo X LMB push pin demo X USDZ and then the material we didn't provide the material yet I'm just gonna be converting it and hopefully it works yeah it actually worked it works but it's working really really slowly that's because the alambic uh, conversion is kind of divided the speed by 24 frames so you want to have the USDA intermediate objects and kind of tweak that a little bit this is a uh, something that you need to do unfortunately for now um, all right, so it's supposed to be generating the USDA somewhere. Ah, it's put, it's putting this thing under this guy, which is wrong. Anyhow, so this is one five one two divided by twenty four is sixty sixty three supposedly, and this one twenty four, this one sixty three, and then simply file save as. Push pin demo x dot usda save now let's go back into this guy so we're gonna use the usda and ignore it get rid of this for now recreate the usdz and hopefully this time it's generating uh, it in real time so yeah this is working and we can just send it to the iPhone let me try demonstrate that um, screen mirroring I have to have a screen mirror reflector okay reflector 3 uh, app is pretty good at mirroring so ideally at some point uh, whatever animations you have here in blender should kind of translate into this guy like immediately without any issue uh i i kind of think that maybe apple need to have some kind of 3d app of some sort send it to my iphone i'm gonna put it into file so sometimes this airdrop takes a bit of seconds iCloud Drive, save it into USDZ. You might notice something missing here. It's a. Uh... Yep. Okay. It is working. Uh, something's missing is the is the material, the material and shader, because this object doesn't have a UV as well. So that's a uh, something you have to keep in mind. All right. But there you go. That's a procedural animations. So this works currently using uh, USDZ and then conversion. Um, everything works uh, smoothly. If you have animations that require joins, you need to currently you need to use the GLTF converter. So from Blender you export GLTF and then from GLTF into uh, USDZ. Um, and for blend shape, I don't think it works yet, but I might be wrong. But there you go. That's a quick look how you can generate uh, procedural animations even though this is the basic you've seen this at some point but uh 
the USDZ is just uh, an extra thing, but I, I really like this kind of uh, workflow. So you're turning, turning all kind of any kind of animations that you can generate. Um, this is like super basics, but you can easily go back and then change the function here and make a more interesting um, procedural animations. Like instead of a sine wave, maybe you, you can also add some kind of noise. Maybe even go mo further with a with a wave functions, not just like a simple one. You can kind of mix and match uh, the wave. So yeah, there you go. Hopefully you find this interesting. Let me know what you think. Um, if Apple developers is watching this, I'm just well, I want to let you know that's the push pin actually with the material the push pin will actually crash. So maybe that's because when it's generating material, it's kind of generating it for each of the instance so that's why it's a uh, it's too heavy for ios anyhow it's for for mac os it's actually working um i'll show you once again so this is the result with the material a simple basic uh, yeah, pbr material it's working fine on the mac os but if i send it to ios it's gonna crash uh, still it's ios 12 beta so there you go. Thanks again for tuning in and I'll see you next time. Bye.